Hey, Blocksters, welcome to The Blockchain Hustler, a show where we talk to the leading founders, creators, celebrities, and disruptors who are hustling in Web3. Today's guest is Sam Tapalia. Sam is the founder of Zebic, a DeFi technology built on Solana that ensures timely, uninterrupted payment processes and streams. Zebic is spearheading the evolution of how money is moved on the blockchain, creating the model for the future of on-chain payments. And most recently, Zebic has created Zaps, a fully functional one-stop app store for DeFi projects on Solana. Backed by Solana Ventures, Coinbase, Circle Ventures, and more, Sam and his team at Zebic have raised over $30 million and are at the forefront of the DeFi revolution. Sam, thank you so much for joining us on the Blockchain Hustler today. Yeah, thank, thanks for having me. We really appreciate your time. I'm excited to dive into your story and how you started Zebic. Um, congratulations, first of all, on all of your success and everything that you're doing. And before we dive in, I want to dig into your background a little bit. Um, it seems your passion for decentralized finance comes from your upbringing in Nepal. Tell me about your background, your upbringing, and how you came up with the idea to create Zebic. Yeah, uh, so I was born in Nepal. Um, so I grew up in the second half of the civil war. Um, so I grew up under a dictator and a socialist country and, uh, and then a communist government, right? So throughout my life, I have always been around uh, what I call like super centralized government, right? Where there was not much of freedom of speech. It was not freedom of movement. There's quite a lot of things that used to happen. There used to be a time in which we used to have curfews for like for a couple of years. So after 9 p.m., you cannot walk outside. If you're um, if you're crossing from one district to another district, uh, there will be army camps, uh, you know, checking what you have in your in your luggage. So that's how that's how cra like, it's crazy the, the situation was. Um, and I grew up in that, so didn't grow up with any like technology up until I was like 13 years old. Saw a computer around when I was 13, st started writing codes because um, turns out I was, uh, it was pretty easy for me to understand. And that kind of helped me you know, build like smaller software. Started my first project when I was 15. Um, it was basically Slack for high schoolers, uh, didn't work out. Uh, but after that time, I was doing data labeling work. That time, someone introduced me to Bitcoin. Um, at some point, I was I was pretty involved in it. Started another company, um, sold that company. Couldn't because I could not scale it outside Nepal because uh, I was I was in high school, right? Uh, and then I came to states second half of 2017. So saw all the ICO boom. Bought ETH at a very low price. Saw like rode the wave. Uh, saw the crash. Uh, wanted to start a, a crypto company, basically, or um, but basically a project where I was thinking of launching Brex, but backed by USDT and DAI. Um, and 2018 crash basically removed almost 99% of the investors. So no one really backed me. After eight months, abandoned the idea um, and started an AI company, raised a couple of million dollars. Um, the thing was like back what, back in 2017, I wrote a paper on how at some point in future, money will be self-driving like cars. And it will all be backed by smart contract where your money will like continuously go from one end to another, come back with more money. No one really understood what I was talking about, but last year, a bunch of my friends were discussing things that does not make sense. And one of the things we ended up talking about was payroll because, you know, you work for 14 days, someone pays, a day, pays you at day 17 and no one can really explain you why. So we were like, hey, wouldn't it be great to be paid in real time? So that was like, you know, our kernel of idea. And we expanded upon that and realized it's, it's possible to pay people in traditional finance in that method. And you can only do this with a smart contract. And all the, all the research that I did a few years ago kind of came in and fit in this place. So uh, so that's why we came up with the idea of Zebex, right? Zebex is a continuous settlement protocol. It's just a really sexy way of saying, instead of sending money as a one-time thing, we can make it a continuous flow. Um, and our basically goal is to enable a world in which everyone is being paid in real time so that you are not relying on payday lending. Um, your access to your earned ways is in, in real time, so you are not relying on any authority to hold your pay, right? So that's kind of the, the vision and mission of the company. And that's how we got into this, uh, to this very interesting opportunity and interesting project. Wow, I love that you wrote a paper on this back in high school and nobody <laughs> understood. Little do they know and see now everything that you built. That's such an incredible story. And obviously Zebic enables new possibilities for how money can ultimately function in this world. Um, and you said you want the goal, the goal of Zebic is to obviously take it global Ultimately, I guess, big picture, what do you hope to accomplish and how will this disrupt the financial system? Yeah, I think the the whole world runs on pay cycle, right? 
the fact that we have 14 days pay cycle or 30 days pay cycle is the reason behind we have the concept of credit, right? So in a world in which everyone is being paid in real time, the concept of credit itself is going to evolve. So now your credit history is not going to be the same as the personal credit history where you're like, you have 800 or 820, whatever the score that is, that's based on how you were able to pay or every 30 days or every 45 days, right? So now your pay, pay cycle and the credit cycle is going to be how many cents you are earning every second and how many of those cents you are able to pay back for your debt and things like that. That's going to be a complete new pyramid in terms of credit, right? And knowing you are able to pay in real time, your interest rate is actually going to go down because now you're much more uh, reliable for the for the lenders, right? But in the same time, it's also like an interesting opportunity for you because now you're also receiving your money faster. So you are able to compound the money faster. And in the same time, your interest rates are going down as well. So it actually brings efficiency in the market. And efficiency in the capital market is actually one of the biggest thing that would drive a completely new, new like type of innovation. In fact, the things that can be built on top of Zevek, we haven't even thought of yet. Right, like you know, just the baseline itself is so exciting. Imagine one day paying for your Netflix by the second, only paying for the seconds of the content that you have watched, right? Um, and it it will basically start bringing capital efficiency in almost any type of products that is out there. So, so right now we're focusing on payments, but over the time it will open payments like outside of payroll, like to subscription and other markets as well. Wow, that is so fascinating. Oh my gosh, the possibilities are like truly endless. Obviously you're working on payments, you're thinking of subscriptions, Netflix, what other examples are top of mind? Uh, like any type of pay, like, you know, subscription payment in terms of like Shopify would be interesting. Um, imagine, yeah. like, in, like imagine paying for your Uber, uh, not for a trip, but for like the miles you're driving, riding, right? So right. That, will be, that will also be interesting. Um, like paying for your airlines uh, ticket not on, on, on a real time basis as well. Almost like there are like all, there are quite a lot of uh, transactions that can actually happen in this way. And mm -hmm. what does that, what does that really allow is it just it removes the dependency on a centralized party to quote you price. It's like the fact that Netflix is going thirty nine nine a month is basically the power relies on Netflix, right? But if you're only paying for like 15 cents a second, the power lies on you because you can turn off that account anytime. Right. Here, the moment you pay 13.99, even you turn on, turn it on, off, you share the password to your friends or you don't share the password to your friends, it's, you're already paying. They are the one who is on the centralized party, right? Who have the central authority on charging you whatever, whatever they said the price, right? Here, once it's in your, it's on this manner, the power lies on you and, and it just like, it just, basically takes power away from, it's not taking power away, but it actually redistributes the power back to the people in terms of, in terms of payment. So that's kind of the, the uses. And it's more than just what it brings on the economic perspective. It's, it also brings in terms of the, uh, the concept of power and, 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 and the concept of, you know, societal uh, hierarchy, you know, within, within the corporate and the consumer uh, landscape. I can go on like hours on this because I have oh, always yeah. been, I've always been really fascinated about the the whole concept of how uh, you know how we are paying price for something just because a company a company is able to code something and you kind of like you kind of have no choice but to accept that right so so that's so that's why I think over the long run Zevik can transform quite a lot of things and there are things that we haven't even thought of yet so that's why I always say that right I know I love the open endedness like like I said the possibilities are endless that's so incredible and as Zevik you're also working on I want to get into the Zaps, which is a one-stop app store for DeFi projects on Solana. Tell me about Zaps and how that works. Yeah, so we started with Zevek as the payment streaming solution, right? Where people are receiving their paycheck by the second and they have the money stored in their account. And we saw what people are really doing is taking the money out to their from their wallet and putting it back on their, you know, like back on their debit card or bank account, whatever, whatever they're taking the money out, right? So we realized that if we enable a source where they are easily able to manage those money, right? Um, that's actually a great product to add in the ecosystem. So that's why we have the debit card that will easily allow them to offer the money. But in the same time, the idea of the, uh, the Zebec app store allows for people to properly, you know, uh, navigate the DeFi ecosystem. So the idea is if I, if you're in Solana and you want to, let's say you have $5,000, right? And instead of sitting that in your wallet, you're like, you know what, let me lend this money and get, one person or two percent or whatever the percent that is, right? There are fifteen lending and borrowing apps. Which one are you going to choose? And you, as a consumer, if you have to spend 
two hours researching each one of them, that's 30 hours of your time, right? So you kind of don't have the time and, and energy to go through. But imagine having an app store where you can just look into there and you have the button that says Len and you can give the $5,000 and it will give you all the best option that is out there across the chain, right? And you can see how much money is going on each one of these pools. Like that will give you a sense of trust. So that's the same idea what like Amazon has, right? Like, um, like if you go to Google and search, let's say a, like something, a t-shirt, right? How many t-shirts are you gonna see? Millions, right? Uh, and you don't know which one to buy, but you go to Amazon and in Amazon it says like, hey, this shirt was bought 4,000 times, it has five star ratings and these are the reviews, right? Kind of creating that scenario but within the um, uh, you know DeFi DApps ecosystem, because they're lending, borrowing, yield farming, AMM, swaps. There's all these different protocols, and there's hundreds of them, and it's really hard for people to navigate. And Zebek App Store helps uh, businesses to manage the treasury properly, and the individual to manage their uh, manage their cash prop uh, properly as well. So that's what Zebek App Store is doing: is simplifying DeFi and um, DeFi and apps for normal consumers and the enterprise. Mm, okay, that's incredible. And what's the timeline for Zaps, and how soon can DeFi, <clears throat> excuse me, can DeFi projects on Solana be able to integrate? Yeah, so we are we are actually still in beta, um, and probably in like in a month or two we'll open it up. The reason we are trying to open it up slowly is it's better. It's like you know, if if you can do something fast or if you can do something good, it's always better to do something good than fast, right? Right. Um, like I forgot who said it, but the. Um, if you're able to do it right, that was the fastest way you can like you know, that was the fastest speed, right? So that's why we're trying we're trying to follow that that direction because uh, we don't think it's like a you know six months one year type of project. It's, it's a multi year project, so it's better for us to think about every single things. So so the first thing we're gonna add is actually our debit card. Uh, it's gonna be out there very soon, and right after uh, right after the the Zap app store is gonna come out. And the the interesting thing we we're already actually integrating quite a lot of these companies within within our app store. We have if you if anyone follows our uh, repository, you can actually see well like we're we're adding all these different companies. But it's just that people are saying, when are you gonna not, when you're gonna enable the front end, right? We're just auditing it multiple times and and making sure our go to market strategy is right and 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 users are completely aligned in that front. So so that's why the product is there. We're just trying trying to find line find an exact timeline to launch the product. Hundred percent. That's absolutely the way to do it. Um, and just in your opinion, why are Zaps and creating an app store important for DeFi? I think uh, it's not. I think it's like what I have learned, right? Uh, if you want uh, crypto and DeFi and Web two to succeed, um, five hundred of us in Twitter using uh, our balance sheet and just like you know putting money in one yield farming vault and other other yield farming vault, it's not going to make us successful. Um, the biggest lending borrowing protocol has $15 billion. JP Morgan has $2 trillion. That's what you are going up against. And why does JP Morgan work? Uh, it has all the money. Well, first thing is trust and centralized party and all those things are there, but more than that is, is simplicity, right? So you can think that back in like uh, late uh, 20th century, you used to have merchant banks and travelers bank, you used to have 50 different types of banks, right? And over the time, what banks realized was, hey, we can actually offer whatever that traveler's bank is offering ourselves as well. And over the time, we actually had a much larger centralized banks, right? That's why we have the JP Morgan Chase of the world, right? So what they did was they made it easy for people to, you know, use the banking products. So same thing we have to look in the DeFi and crypto perspective as well is like we have hundreds of this protocol and they all do fascinating things. But users, like normal users, are not going to understand this. My mom, my mom is not going to understand the difference between one AMM and another AMM, right? And these two AMMs are always going to fight with different yield pools and things like that. So, how can we make easier for the mass consumer to actually use this? Is make it first thing we are solving is we are solving the demand problem of crypto by enabling payroll, right? Because everyone uses payroll. So once we have brought all the people to the party, right? Now our idea is how can we enable them to have a good time? And we can have a good time if the DJ is playing music properly in a row and you know it goes from certain beat per minute to a certain beat per minute, right? But if they come to a party and there's nine music playing simultaneously, probably people are not gonna have a good time. So that's kind of what's happening with, with DeFi. A lot of people are excited. They come in and they're like, wow, there's 95 different yield pools. Where do I put the money? So, so I think it's all, it enables 
it enables a mass consumer to interact with DeFi more easily and 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 and, and UI UX more than UI more than just UI UX problem is actually creates a easier um, e easier flow for flow of uh, of DeFi. It's, you once you get the money, you don't have to search seventy five different places. It's right there, right? It's like the ease of use. So. Uh, these are the early things, but over the long run, you we will start to see other different traction, uh, other different interesting traction as well. Where now protocols can partner with each other just within our within within Zebek itself, so they don't have to do multiple integration in their in their front end. They can just point one API to another API within our within 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 Zebek App Store, and all of a sudden, now the yield that you were getting in Compound is going to sorry, like Compound equivalent in Solana goes to another pool, and from that another pool to no, goes to another pool. You can start to create the, all these complicated workflows. So these are the secondary things, but the first thing is like we just enable users to have uh, a easy uh, experience and, and basically make uh, make DeFi not scary because DeFi right now is for quite a lot of users. Right, I know the simplicity, like you said, is key to bringing it to the masses for sure. And checking out your Twitter account, gosh, you truly do drop some gems. And on there, you call yourself an eternal optimist. I was kind of scrolling through your Twitter earlier today. And it was just so interesting thinking about your story, having been born during a civil war, living through dictators, communist rulers. You've truly persevered and accomplished so much and at a young age. So my question for you is, how do you cultivate that optimism, and why is it important for founders and builders to have that mindset? I think, like, uh, I think that a lot of time it's when you go through a tough time, right, and you still survive. That kind of gives you that, like, you know, that skin. But the interesting example is like the best of the moment in my life has led to my biggest misery, and my biggest miserable moment of my life had led to my biggest learning and biggest accomplishment. And that has made me to realize is whatever happens, you just have to be optimist because at the end of the day, it cannot be that bad. And so that's why I, ne I never really like uh, think in terms of like, you know, today or tomorrow, right? I look in terms of like what I was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I was, uh, uh, you know, like, like 13 year old like 14 year old kid of a farmer right growing like growing up in the middle of nowhere every 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 summer there used to be a flood back in my in in our backyard like a river used to basically like you know flooding our entire land and that's like that was where i grew up and now i'm here at like you know grew up like in a state in silicon valley for five years now building all these interesting things and if I can do that for in 10 years, now what I can be in the next 10 years. So that's how I really I, I look in a much larger time frame. And if you start looking for a much larger time frame, life, you, you, you don't have to be anything else but it's optimist. You know, once you are optimist like, about the next 10 years, everything in between just like, you know, uh, works out for it works out with it itself. That's beautiful. I love that. And everyone says this um, bear market is a time for building. And something else you wrote on Twitter. Um, that things will start looking better a year from now. And you said, at least for the ones who are working hard at solving problems for customers, can you expand on that and your predictions? Yeah, I, so one thing uh, I know for a fact is like, a lot of people are building things, right? But a lot of people are building things just for the pure goal of you know, surviving, right? And, and there are two types of survival. One is survival by actually solving a problem for like even 25 people. Right, and there's a survival just to be able to go out there and raise more money or do something A B C D. Right, and when the like you know the, the good thing about bulls and bears is like you know it changes like you know because and 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 the, the good thing about inflation is it goes up and down. Right, that's kind of what I like you know here in US you're seeing inflation for the first time in Nepal I saw it three times already so I don't I like I I definitely have some experience about this part and one of the things I kind of saw that like you know that was very really interesting um, back in back in Nepal was when these like inflation or economic downturn ends, the companies that were actually super focused on customers, while they were not that visible during the bear market, but by the time next bull market comes out, they are the only one people care about. Because all of a sudden they were the one who were solving problems and they were the one who had the EBITDA cash flow, they were the one who had the margins, right? And we don't talk about any of that stuff in in DeFi because we were like, hey, what what is cash flow? What is revenue? Like I like in like in in in, De in DeFi and crypto, we're supposed to not to talk about it because it's all about the community and all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, protocol has to make revenue, right? Because it's not just out here for three years so that founders can invest the token and call it a day. Right. Like you know, 
for this to be sustainable, the protocol has to have this um, this revenue model in which it it's, it creates this uh, a flywheel where it's able to capture the value and it's, it's, it's redistributed back to the users and it has enough to sustain itself, right? That's kind of what, what we're looking forward to. And you can only achieve that when you start to serve actual customers and make actual revenue and actual EBITDA margin. So that's kind of my prediction is like the next, next bull run, um, we will have a lot of these like, you know, interesting, uh, experiments, um, which you know might go bust, but the ones that are gonna, are going to survive are are one gonna, who are going to be big in the next run are the ones who are solving real problems for real users, and we're making actual profits and EBITDA. Absolutely, and I want to end this interview with one last gem that you said on Twitter. You said life is all about finding what you love and doing everything in your power to be around that for the rest of your life. Are you doing what you love and how do you make sure what you do aligns with that every day? Yeah, so like every day I wake up and this the first thing is I ask is like, if I don't do this today, what will happen, right? And most of the time is like, it will slow down something that I was going to do in 10 years from now, right? So I know that every day, every second of the time that I'm spending on Zebek, aligns towards my longer goal that I want to do in 10 years from now, right? And that itself is the most motivating thing. It's like, you know, I want to, the, I want like, the, like a, 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 you know, like I'm 24, the 34 year old me to be proud of what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. So, and that's kind of what, what it is, right? Like you, it's, the first thing is you have to find what you want. And then after that is you will do everything in your power to like not give up on that one. And, and to be like optimist every single second. Yes, it's gonna be hard and sometimes you'll be sad, but you just can't give up. You know, if you want, once you, you should have the mindset that if I want something, I will get it. You know, so it, and, and that is like, that is how, what, how I like to think about things. And, and that's all has to come back to like eternal optimism and being like basically understanding what you want in your life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Gosh, getting clear, having eternal optimism. Blocksters, definitely, if you don't already follow Sam on Twitter, go do that for some beautiful gems, incredible insight. Sam, thank you so much for taking the time to join us on the Blockchain Hustler today. I really appreciate your time, your insight, your expertise. You're doing incredible things, and we can't wait to see what else Zebek has in store. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate your time as well. Thank <laughs> you.